Oh, dude, listen, welcome back. It's Yorkshire Blazeman here, and today I'm going to do a video showing off my AK Bayonet collection. Uh, before I get into the video, um, I've got some announcements. Number one, I have created my own website uh, identifying all the bayonets in my having my collection. It is called identifymybayonets.wixsite.com. So last, I've done for my bayonets. I'll put a link down up here and down below. Um, you can't simply just type in identify my bayonet because I'm a cheapskate, I'm not paying two quid for Wix to give me a domain, so you're going to have to type it in the long way, just copy and paste the link, save it. Well no, so I'll put it down below. Um, if you're up to date with my Instagram feed, my Instagram page, you know I've got some uh, new bayonets, uh, this Russian one and an American M1 converted, which I did a video on, and I've also got two new more. If you check my um, website, you'll find them on there if you want to have a sneak peek before that, but videos of those should be coming up shortly. Anyway, so let's get into the video of my bayonet collection for my AK forty seven. Well, my AK bayonet collection. I've got these organised by countries. Um, I've got seven in total. I would like to get one of each country, but in the UK, it's very hard to get hold of uh, AK bayonets. It's easy to get hold of old uh, World War One, World War Two bayonets, but modern day bayonets is quite harder to get hold of. Um, but anyway, so let's start this. We're going to go left and right. So let's start off with the big daddy, the original country, Russia. So we ha I have two Russian bayonets here. I've got an AKM Type 1 Transitional and an AKM Type 2. So the Transitional is a Type 1 uh, bayonet. So we have the nice polymer curved handle, all one piece with a stainless steel blade. Lovely cut, uh, Baker-like handle on this. Unfortunately, this one does not have a serial number on the uh, bayonet itself. Uh, but the scabbard does. The scabbard has an issue number of 716 at the top there and on the back we have the Ishevik uh, logo with um, 41 on here if anyone knows what that means on these bayonets they have like a number but that I don't know if you do know please let me know I'd be interested this has seen a lot of um, use excuse me there are some cracks on the back of the handle I don't know if it's going to see if you can see those there um, the reason why we typed in a metal hand pommel was because soldiers are using these as hammers um, unfortunately it's just seen a lot of wear but the handle itself is maintained it's lovely but uh, color a nice dark baker like um, unfortunately there was some paint on here I don't know which guy painted on it um, I think it just ruined it a bit but anyway um, if you didn't know you've got a wire cutter here which is a useful design the American M9 Americans copied this on the M9 bayonet and most bayonets, modern bayonets now have a wire cutter the British LA whatever it, rifle has that as well um, and Russian bayonets have the serrations, unlike the Polish ones. So that's the Type 1 transitional from Russia. Next we have the Type 2, so we have the Type 2 bayonet and the Type 2 scabbard. Basically, same scabbard as this one, virtually same colour as well, maybe a bit lighter. This is matching serial numbers of 386. And 386 on the handle. The handle has seen quite a lot of wear and tear unfortunately but it gives it character I think. Um, on the back of the scabbard we have Ishevik here and 84. On the handle we have a very faded Ishevik logo and the number 25 slash 2. Um, you can tell it's the Ishevik date because they have a uh, manufacturer bayonet because they have a slash the num two numbers slash and another number. The um, black finish is worn off but everything's working perfectly blade there we go this has seen a lot of wear and again we have the normal um, belt cutter, well, belt cutter wire cutter and the serrations on there there we go next we go into these um these are quite hard to f hard to find uh, type two type one transitional for Russia type twos are quite common next we have the East Germans um, we have, I have one type 1, one type 2. This is a really poor example of a type 1. I got it in a um, auction along with a Bulgarian AK 47 bayonet and a Portuguese Mauser. Some guys just basically just completely destroy this for his own private gain information. They've cut off the back of the pommel just to see how it was formed. So you have a metal bin and the pollen plastic over it. Um, East German type, East German bayonets are all black. So we would have had a a black coating on the scabbard. You can basically fa faintly see it, but they've stripped it off. Type ones have a rubber insulator, like on the Egyptian here, but that's missing. Um, 
one way you, there's no serial number on this mate unfortunately one way you can find out if it's east german is they should have on the cross piece i'll take a photo and zoom in uh either k or k100 that's the east german inspection mark that's got k100 on there and no other, other markings and east germans do have the um serrations on as well um the russian and east german bayonets were uh, made quite nicely they were like the highest quality ones you could get i think i believe unfortunately i don't have any frogs for these but here do here's a fully complete east german type one transitional these are quite hard to find as well um the russia and east germany were the only countries who did this configuration uh type one bayonet with a type two scabbard the rest of the eastern block or well, majority of them had a what the egyptians have here which is a type two configurate type two um transitional configuration so one way to find out well two easy ways to find out if your bayonet is east, east, east german is if it has k or k100 on the cross piece or anywhere on the bayonet or the frog itself the east germans had a leather frog like most um ak bayonets had but on the outside of it they had a gray finish on there which no other country did so that's another way you can see this one if it's east german this one's had a lot of use the leather frog is breaking off there which is a shame so I you got I've always you gotta look after this so and it's quite loose. We've got a, a, a olive webbing um retention strap. I don't like the retention straps on uh AK Bennett's and I don't like the frog as well because it's all loose and I hate it. Um but we have a nice stainless steel blade here. This one hasn't seen blade, it's been kept in good condition, not many scratches on it. It's just a handle that's in quite a poor state. Um Again, we've got the nice Waikato. This has seen a lot of uses. It's very loose and worn out, the system. Um, we've got no serial number on the bayonet um, itself, apart from some marks on the back, scratch marks like that. I don't know what those stand for, but I know someone's done that themselves. Maybe how many people they've stabbed. I have not a clue. Um, on the cross piece, we have... Um, the K in the circle, so the East German inspection mark, I will put, you can briefly see it there. I will take a photo and zoom in, my camera zooming in quality is crap. Um, on the scabbard itself, on the back, there's nothing on the front of the um, scabbard, but on the back we have two, 1946-3, and then on the bottom we have a circle and an F, a circle and a Z, and a circle and a K. Uh, I don't know what those other two are. Um, if anyone just know, please let me know. And if anyone knows what these numbers mean on the back there, I don't think 1946 is when this was made. I'm, I'm guessing that's just a serial number, or maybe it's rifle number 1946, or maybe soldier 1946. I, I don't know. Um, but the reason why um, there have been transitional bayonets is because a soldier might lose. Um, his scabbard or his um, bayonet and have to you know um, get a new one or an old one and put it together um, that was the sort of thing about them but um, these are quite hard to find the t transitionals um, these I think are quite easy to find um, and so these two are quite easy to find the transitionals are quite hard to find I believe um, next another one that's qu actually really quite hard to find but it's not one of the hardest this is an Egyptian type 2 uh, transitional Egyptians always find it hard, but the hardest ones, the rarest ones, are if it's got a dark plum handle or a brown handle. This is just a black handle. And Egyptian ones have been famous. So, right, two ways you can find out an Egyptian if the handle colour, um, if it's dark plum or brown, then you know it's Egyptian straight away. But this is a black one, so this is quite hard to find out. Another way to find out if it's Egyptian is the retention strap. They have a um, an emerald green, emerald green, emerald green retention strap. Um, that is a lesser weave of, say, a East German. And they have famous for their poor quality, fit and finish wise, and the amount of excess resin and glue on the pommel here and the cross guard. It's, 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 they are disgusting. But there's no marks on here, and unfortunately, who um. I've, Mr. Abdul in Cairo, who put this together, kind of put on the the um, thingy straight. Apologies for my um, stereotypical Egyptian name there, but um, 
We still have the um, serrations, um, as you can see, all the gunk on there. Coating and cosmoline. If you, unfortunately, the um, I tried to pull this off to clean it, and it just broke on me. Um, but all this is coating in cosmoline, and it's horrendous. But um, yeah, so you got the rubber insulator to cut electrical wire because you've got a metal scabbard. This has seen a lot. I don't know if this has seen a lot of use or it's just poorly put together. I'm just guessing poorly put together because it's so bloody loose. But yeah, so that's the Egyptian um, Type Two uh, transitional. Next, we have a Yugoslavian unissued Type Two. This is my first Type Two. This is a beautiful bayonet. These are quite common in the UK. Yugos are quite common anywhere, but I think these are um, lovely bayonets and I prefer these to the East German quality because I actually, I don't know why, I know East Germans are meant to be, if you get a really nice East German they're beautiful, but I prefer Yugos because I think it's a minor nation and it's a bit cooler. Um, so there are two very easy ways to distinguish a Yugoslavian AKM bayonet. We've got a brass fawn here, fawn, no other country did that, and we have a K7 electro penciled into the cross into the um, wire cut a bit. I will take a photo of that and upload it on. So that's how you can tell if it's a Yugo. Uh, we've got a green retention strap as well. Uh, we've got a nice tan leather frog with a brass form. This is matching serial number at the base of the scabbard is 622549 and sure enough 622549. Uh, we have no other marks on the bayonet itself, but on the back of the scabbard we have the number 2. Same style, um, clip point blade, serrations and wire cutter. This is very stiff because it's been an issue. That's a beautiful bayonet, one of my favourites in the um, of my AKM collection. Um, just in lovely condition as I said on this shoot it came coated in cosmoline uh, it took me hours to clean that all off um, but it's a beautiful bayonet uh, lastly so all of these are AKM bayonets so they were used uh, for the AKM rifle um, but I've got here the very first AK-47 bayonet so when the AK-47 was first designed it wasn't designed to accompany a bayonet so this was an afterthought and that's why it's got a really weird handle but this is a Bulgarian AK-47 Bayonet, so we've got a nice leather frog here. I prefer this frog compared to these dangly things that the AKM ones have. I think absolutely shocking. But we've got a nice slim profile bayonet. We've got a lovely, lovely um, Bakelite handle. Nice colours coming out of there. One way to tell if it's Bulgarian is on the frog. We've got two um, rivets pinned in to keep the frog secure. This is so comfy in the handle, not well, handle in the hand because of the curvature of the handle. And these have coated with like a whitish greyish uh, finish. And what's interesting about these bayonets, this isn't an issue, it's got no marks on it. Uh, what's interesting about this bayonet is how you pull it off the rifle. You pull this pin back here, this tab, you pull that back, and that re releases the two pins in the handle here, compared to all these bayonets which have a button press here to take the bayonet. Off the rifle. Another interesting thing about AKM, but all these AKM, well, all these AK bayonets is when you mount it onto the rifle, the blade faces up towards the muzzle ring instead of normally, which is normally face down. So that's another interesting thing. How most countries bayonets it, during all the wars, World War One, World War Two, and after, always have their blade facing down. But Russia decided we were going to be different, and they decided to keep, have the blade facing up. These knives make great fighting knives, um, I think especially the AK-47 one does, uh, because it's a longer reach, but it's not a very practical survival knife, which were these were designed to be. Uh, instead of a soldier be having a normal knife on him and his bayonet, these were designed to be a fighting knife and also a survival too, tool, which is quite interesting. So, put that back there. So this has been a brief overview of my AK um, bayonet collection. I'm just going to go over quickly the rarity. Um, quite hard to find. Common, quite hard, very hard, common, and very hard as well. Um, I would like to expand my AKM bayonet collection. Um, I did mention in the video before 
that um, I'm going to focus this year on basically bayonets rather than knife reviews and stuff like that. But if you guys want to see knife reviews, please do let me know, or any gear reviews. If you also like to see how you take one of these apart, don't hesitate to let me know, because um, I've done it before, but I didn't know if that's something people want to see. But anyway, so thank you guys for watching this video, uh, and I shall see you next time.